everyone, welcome back to the show. The Higher Education and Not-for-Profit Consultancy at Thank You Bader released the Stepping Away from the Brink series booklet, which is a resource guide for higher education leaders. Now, the series is the first round of its kind to be blunt and brutally honest with the higher education sector challenges as the authors see them and the opportunities leaders have to innovate in a constantly changing world. Sharing more about this is the de- and giving us some details is Thinky Beta's president and CEO, Dr. Edward Summers. And uh, Dr. Summers, good to have you. It's good to be here. Thanks for having us. So listen, when we talk about stepping away from the brink, uh, obviously a resource guide that is going to help uh, educators, but give me a little bit behind the uh, foundation of why you decided to put this resource guide together. Sure. Um, so a group of us got together, uh, myself, Dr. Adriel Hilton, uh, who's a senior vice president of student affairs um, down at the University of New Orleans, and Dr. Leslie Branch, uh, and later Dr. Dewey Dale Stolle joined us. And we, uh, you know, have all had um, many years of experience in higher education, and we had worked in various levels, whether in management and on a faculty, um, some at the very executive level as chief of staffs. Um, and we often talk about the issues and challenges that higher education face and the fact that uh, some institutions uh, over the last you know, 10 years have closed or merged or associated with other institutions. And part of it is because they haven't had these really tough and hard conversations about the state of their institution, the state of uh, the market. And people don't like to call it higher ed a market, but it is a market you know, place. Um, and, um, and, and, and how to directly confront these challenges head on. Um, I think that institutions often scapegoat or skate around the issues and they don't talk necessarily about them and they don't necessarily engage and have inclusive conversations of many other constituencies at their communities. So we, uh, based on our frustrations with uh, the way we saw higher education going, we, we said, let's start to write about it. Let's start to talk about it. Let's start to utilize and leverage our experiences and, and talk about these issues, but not just talk about them. Let's make sure that we're providing solutions to them. And I should highlight the, the, the big thing too is that, you know, we are the Thinky Beta as an organization is a, a black led um, uh, organization and the step away from the brink is no different. Uh, all of the authors are people of color. Mm-hmm. And we, I believe, have a, a unique experience. Um, and often we are not, if we're, it's not an HBCU, if it's not a Hispanic serving institution or a minority serving institution, often we're not at the helms of those institutions. Uh, lots of the primarily white institutions at the top have presidents who are white and other leaders who are white. And so we thought it was really important that us people, leaders of color, actually author this series and talk about our unique perspectives and our unique uh, uh, solutions to some of the challenges that higher education face, particularly because we're not at that, those leadership levels often at uh, primarily white institutions. So that was the foundation yeah. for why we decided to, to author this series. And so when we unpack this now from a perspective, and I'm glad that you put it from a perspective where communities of color are really being adversely affected, uh, let's unpack some of those challenges that you're able to really determine by use of your study. Yes. So the, the, the study has about like 10 chapters in, in, in the booklet that we uh, sent to you all. Um, but w- what we highlighted um, in this was a, a lot of the uh, management challenges that institutions have, um, um, often at the executive level, at the board level. We uh, looked at some of the issues of the demographic shifts and the fact that we are increasingly becoming a brown nation. And we're not only a brown nation, but a brown nation that has some economic challenges as well. Uh, the reality that we see it is that, you know, white folks aren't having the 10 kids that they had in the past uh, and, and sending their kids off to school. You know, uh, we're lucky if we see in the a white family, if they have any kids, let alone, you know, one or two. So um, we're starting to see more black and brown young people come of age. And so that's uh, going to have a major impact on college and universities in terms of their future student body and what their institutions look like. Um, there are also challenges of, you know, knowing that the, the demographics will shift and it is shifting, uh, like how to make campuses more friendly towards these populations, how to make students feel wanted, how to make students feel like it's a campus for them. Uh, other challenges is academic programming, how to reimagine and re academic programming and making sure that it's relevant to the jobs on career pathways that exist today and exist for the future. Um, uh, often colleges don't tackle that and they just leave curriculum 
same way it was 30, 40 years ago. Well, times have changed, right? You cannot leave the curriculum that way. We've also um, looked at issues of how to make, how to better partner with community-based organizations uh, where the campuses and colleges and universities are located, but with, but with industry as well. And how to make campus a more, uh, a sort of this, this place where it's not only a college campus, but it's a college campus that has industry there, that has community there, that all of a sudden it becomes this true hub of community engagement uh, on the larger sense, not just the people that attend the institution, but the people in the local community and industry as well. I think increasingly we're going to see more and more campuses think about how to become a career center uh, institution where we have young people not only attending school, but doing internships and gaining practical applied experience uh, um, 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 on their particular campuses. So, um, and then I, I'd say the, the last major issue that, that, that we're seeing is, and that we, that we looked at was that this notion going back to the demographic shift, this notion going back to many institutions, particularly HBC, uh, uh, particularly primarily white institutions, um, some have not dealt with this challenge of the demographic shift. They continue to have strategies that um, do not focus on uh, making their campuses diverse. They may have these great statements out there and these committees on diversity and equity and inclusion, but they're not true about it. Having worked at the top level at multiple institutions, the second right next to the president, essentially, I know that if institutions want diversity to happen, they can make it happen, period. Period, period, period. But I noticed that what's happening is that institutions have these statements, particularly after the last year that we've had in our country, but they have not necessarily taken it serious. So one of the examples is uh, the weight gain. What we've seen at a lot of PWIs is that they put kids of color, uh, particularly low-income kids who, who may have the grades but cannot afford the institution on a wait list. And they play the game of accepting them at the last minute into their institutions when they've exhausted uh, their options with students who can't afford to pay the full sticker price of the institution. That's an asinine, and I hate to say it, strategy for college and universities where the demographic is shifting and the majority is going to be students of color, students of low income background. So these are some of the challenges that we talk about. And the fact that, you know, institutions, one, need to be more truthful about where they're at in the marketplace. They need to develop strategies that truly embrace a diverse population. They need to develop innovative programs that really prepare young people for uh, work now, but work in the future as well. Uh, and they need to have campuses that uh, build a sense of place, that is a place that young people want to be, that is vibrant, that it feels like they're in a community and not just in a college campus full of themselves, because the world is much larger than the bubble that oftentimes young people live at on college campuses. Yeah. Before we go, how do people get their hands on this resource? Because it sounds very informational and, uh, very, uh, and, and, and very informative there. So they can uh, access this resource. We've made it free to uh, everyone. Um, uh, we didn't want to charge for this because we feel like the, the issues that we touch upon are so critical. They can visit us at uh, www.thethinkubator.org uh, and then find us at the higher education page. Uh, and the report is free to download. Feel free to share it. We've gotten inquiries from all around the country about the report. So it's a free access, a resource for our community. Well, Dr. Summers, one, thank you so much for being with us here uh, on Open. I definitely want to encourage our viewers to take a look and see a little bit more about that. And uh, glad to have you with us. It's great to be here. Thank you. All right. Now, listen, if you want more information, again, visit their website at thethinkubator.org and then follow them on social media at thethinkubator. We do have more show coming up. We want you to stay with us. Open will return coming up after this.